to this Let's Build an Orc Army with me, Mark, from the Xenobiz channel. So as you know and should be following, um, I've decided to do an Orc Army for the, co for the Codex? This is the Codex. For the channel. At the moment I've got probably 10 Orc Boys done, one and a half trucks done, um, a couple of bikes and a knob and a war boss done, ready. Which I'll be doing in a showcase video once I've got a few more models. Um, and then I can really show you the painting tutorial that I'm going to do for that and stuff like that. So in the last episode we talked about the troop section in the codex. Um, there was only two entries really. And we briefly touched on the, um, the trucks that you use for the transport. So this section is all going to be about the elite section. Which is quite a, a hefty section and it's got a few different units that do different roles. And there's a lot of there's a lot of competitiveness uh, in some of these. Some of these are fun fluff wise, and some of these are just going to be hard to make it in your list. So let's start with Burner Boys. 80 points. Gets you 5 Burner Boys. Weapon skill 4, Ballistic skill 2, Strength 3, Toughness 4, 1 Wound, Initiative 2, 2 Attacks, Leadership 7, and a 6 Up Save. They have a Burner and Stick Bombs. A Burner, which is. Uh, it's basically uh, in close combat, it's strength of the user, AP free, melee two handed, and for shooting, is a flamer template, strength four, AP five, assault one. So you've got an AP free weapon in close combat and a flamer, normal shooting. So that's good against marines for the close combat, um, monstrous creatures if you get a six to wound. They have, here we go, furious charge and mob rule. You can have 10 burner boys at 16 points a model. You can replace uh, up to three models may upgrade to mechs, replacing their burner with mechs tools, sluggers and choppers. They may be accompanied by a grot oiler, chopper with kills. The mech may replace this chopper with a kill saw. It can take mech weapons and they can have a truck as a dedicated transport. Now I'm gonna have one of these in my in my army. What's gonna happen is a unit of five burner boys in a truck, and basically I'm going to have them just to annoy my opponent. So my opponent knows I've got five flamers and they're AP free uh, in combat. And they're in a vehicle. So he's going to have to prioritise them. If he's prioritising them, he's not shooting at my war bikes with a war boss or knob bikers, with, uh, which are going to have feel no pain because of a pain boy. And he's not shooting at my um, shock attack gun. And he's not shooting at my looters, which are the things that are going to damage my opponent the most. So the Burner Boys, depending on what you're playing against, can be quite versatile. If you're playing against a Space Marine army with drop pods and you have um, Space Marines coming out, because with the new Space Marine Codex, it seems the tactic tactics are pretty cool um, and they recommend you to have lots of troops. So having drop pods and troops coming out, either Assault Marines or Stern Guard or whatever you think they should be, I've got some Burners. So I can flame you when you come out, maybe get two or three on each template, and then you times that by the amount of models you have in the truck, which is five. So, good versatility there. Also, if you're going against a horde army, orcs or tyranids, or a cultist list for Chaos Space Marines, just drive the truck up, put a template over the unit, and again, times it by the amount of boys you've got. So if you get six models, six gaunts under the flamer, you've got five burner boys, that becomes 30 wounds. Um, the only problem is that against a mech army, they're not going to be very good. And trucks are not very durable. So it's going to be a case of waiting to see your opponent deploy. If you know he's got drop pods, you keep them behind some cover and you can fly them. Well, run them up and then flame something or you just shoot them up the field flat them out have them there as a distraction it's only going to be with a truck about a hundred ish points of your army to distract your opponent while for a turn everything else goes up and then the next turn you can charge and do your the things that orcs do best and that is why I've got them really to go against hordes and to just be a backup at the back of the line or go shooting forwards and do some damage or be a distraction. Tank busters then are 65 points for five of them. 
so um, a little bit cheaper than Burner Boys. Tank Busters are weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 2, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, initiative 2, 2 attacks, leadership 7, 6 up save, so pretty much standard. They've got a rocket launcher though. Now a rocket launcher is 24 inches, strength 8, AP 3, assault 1. So strength 8 is brilliant, AP 3 is pretty good, one shot, the only issue is their ballistic skill is 2. So you'll be rolling on 5s. But every Orc Battle Report I do see, they, they, they seem to hit with Ballistic Skill 2 quite a bit. It's just the way of it. They've got Stick Bombs and Tank Buster Bombs. Now Tank Buster Bombs uh, are Armour Bane Unworldly Strength 8 AP1 Bombs, like Melter Bombs. Um, yeah, and designed to just blow up vehicles. They have Here We Go, Furious Charge, Mob Rule and Tank Hunters. They've got Glory Hogs in a mission that has the first blood secondary objective, which is most of them, if not all of them. Uh, if the Orc player receives double the normal number of victory points from a, that objective, if the first casualty removed is an enemy vehicle that was destroyed by an attack made by one or more units of tank busters. Anyway, they can have 10 additional tank busters for 13 points a model, 3 bomb squigs, 5 points a model, they are may place their rocket launchers with tank hammers at 15 points a model, I wouldn't. Um, and melee weapons, the boss knob can have a boss pole, blah 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 blah, and can have a truck as a dedicated transport. Now the glory hogs rule I just mentioned is never going to happen, unless you have 3 units of tank busters, and they all combine their shots, say against a land speeder. They're never going to take down land raiders or stuff like that. So, ignoring the glory hogs rule, what I'm thinking of these is again having a unit of, pet of, of five of them in a truck. Now again, another distraction unit. 65 points plus a truck is another, say, 100 points. So I've got 200 points there that my opponent is going to see right. Those are vehicles. The only vehicles that Mark's going to have in his army. I'm going to take them down first. And they're going to be what he shoots at. So that means he's not going to be shooting again at my war boss, my knobs, and all my other good things that I know are going to do the difference. Tank busters will then go as fast as they can forward to a vehicle, or if a space marine army with a drop pod, I'll wait around. Ian likes to do dreadnoughts in drop pods, so I could wait around for that, keep them there, rocket them, and assault with my bombs and all that. Which is quite good. Um, cheap unit, um, they're not going to shoot a lot of things down with their ballistic skill 2. <coughs> a lot of people with burner boys and tank busters are kind of umming and ahhing and they tend to go for some of the op the next options which I'm going to go through, which are the knobs and mega knobs. But I see a place for them to be a distraction so that the 70% of my army can do the job I want them to do. That's generally how I kind of do armies anyway. It's an objective game, so I like to have lots of units that can hold objectives throughout the game, have table control, and then have 60 to 70% of my army go forward and do the attacking, which means my opponent, like Ian, has to deal with it. If he's got a good Tau force that can mark a light and just kind of shoot 20% of my army each turn and take them down, he's going to do well. But if he's just doing the distraction units and my 70% get in his face and do what I want them to do, he'll lose. Um, and that's quite a good tactic with loads of different opponents, not just Ian and Tao. Um, I like to have 70% of the army do the killy killy stuff while the rest of them claim the objectives because of course it is an objective game. Unless you're just playing kill points. Knobs. Orc knobs, 54 points, gives you two knobs and a boss knob. The weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 2, strength toughness 4, so a marine strength and toughness. Two wounds, initiative is 3, 3 attacks, leadership 7, 6 up save. They've got slugger, chopper, stick bombs, here we go, furious charge, mob rule. They can have, you know, have an additional 7 knobs for 18 points a model. Any model may take items from the ranged or melee weapon. A knob may take a warg banner. An ammo runt, any model can have an ammo runt, a boss pole, the entire mob may take heavy armour, four points a model. Heavy armour is a four up armour save. Now, 
there's a lot of things out there that can take up four armor saves. So this is just, that would be four points per model if you had a unit of 10 of them, that's 40 points on them, which kind of doesn't seem much, but it's 40 points wasted if you're against an, ar an army that can take down armor save four, which is a lot of things. Um, the entire mob may take war bikes, 27 points a model. If the unit does not take war bikes, it can have a truck, a wagon, as a dedicated transport. Um, knobs, they're all right, and I'm going to be taking them with war bikes. So what is going to happen is they're going to be 27 points um, upgrade to them. That's going to be quite a hefty chunk. It is going to be a Death Star unit. I'm going to have 10 knob war bikers. That's going to be toughness 5, two wounds each, four up armor save. I think war bikes get them a four up cover save when you jink. They've got a special rule to do with that. A uh, war bike itself has, I'm going to jump to the assault section because I want to check out um, the gun on it. I think they are. If I just go to the war bike section, that'd be a lot easier. So, yeah, two mod. Two wounds, toughness five. Um, it, it, it is not something to sniff about. It, it's, it's essentially what Nurgle bikers want to be. Um, war bike. Four up armor save. If the model on a war bike turbo boosts, it counts as a cover save. Oh, if it turbo boosts, it counts as its cover save being one higher, so you can shoot them up. And they have fitted with twin linked DACA gun. And a DACA gun is 18 inch strength 5, AP5 assault free. So having 10 of those makes 30 shots strength 5, AP5, which is going to take down a horde of gaunts. It's going to wound terminators with that amount of shots it's going to have. It's going to take down troops. It's going to make troops wounded a lot. You have a chance there of doing normal monstrous creatures. Their toughness is six. You need five to wounds. So you could take off a, two, a few of their wounds. But being able to turbo boost and have that extra plus one to the cover save means my distraction units can annoy my opponent. These guys can just go their 12 inches, turbo boost. They'll have a jink, a jink, obviously, when your opponent shoots at them, have a great cover save. They're not going to be alone though, because in this unit I'm also going to have a war boss on a war bike, and I'm going to have a pain boy on a war bike, so they're all going to have feel no pain, and some of the knobs here are going to have power claws. That added with the war boss with the power claw would mean the knobs are resilient, fast, Shooty, yes they're only ballistic skill 2, but that's still going to be a lot of shots will go through. And yeah, close combat. They're strength 4, standard base. They're war with a power claw, that's a strength 8. The war boss will have strength 8 or 10. And um, yeah, so they can take down vehicles, troops, do a hell of a lot of damage and take a lot of shots. This is a great option. Very expensive though, but a great option. Mega knobs, 120 points. You get three mega knobs. That's the weapon skill four, ballistic skill two, strength toughness four, two wounds, initiative three, three attacks, leadership seven, two up save. Twin link shooter, 18 inch range, strength four, eight, B, six, assault two. Power claw, which would make them strength for eight in close combat. Eight. Mega Armor and Stick Bombs. Here we go, Furious Charge and Mob Rule. They may include up to seven additional uh, Mega Knobs at 40 points a model, which is quite a lot of points. They may replace their Twin Link Shooter with a Power Claw and two Kill Swords for 10 points. They may replace their Twin Link Shooter with one of the following, a Combi Weapon, Rocket Launcher or Scorcher for five points. They may take a Boss Pool for five points and they can take a Truck or a Battle Wagon as a dedicated transport. I see Mega Knobs as a, the Orcs kind of answer to Terminators, they're the Terminator version. They've got new models for them, which um, suggests Games Workshop wants to sell them. 
I see them being used a lot in battle wagons, going up the field, going into combat, just kind of being a unit that's probably not going to go down. With two wounds as well, that kind of helps the fact that they don't have an invulnerable save. And their strength 8 AP2 in close combat. It is unworldly, but again, they're quite resilient. Put a pain boy in there, they'll have feel no pain as well. Or a war boss in mega armor, that will help them out as well. In a war, bo a war battle wagon. The thing is for me, they're 40 points each. They're designed for fun, I think. Uh, Warhammer 40k is not a close combat game, it's a shooty game. These guys are so expensive and elite, they have to get into combat to win their points back. Now getting them in a battle wagon is a is, is good option, but then you're going to need maybe some more support and more points into them. And I think it's just too many points into this unit to get them to do anything. And there's, there's, there's already ifs and buts with the Orc Codex. It's not the most competitive codex at all. It is one of the most fun, but it's not one of the most competitive well, codexes around right now. Uh, they, they've got a lot of shots, but they're ballistic skill 5. They're great for close combat. It's not really a close combat game. They can have board control, the amount of models you have, which is great for the objectives, which is great for what they can do and to win games. But in Codex rules, Mega Knobs are great for combat and they're resilient, but you need a lot of points to get them to your opponent to be in combat. So I'm always umming and Aaron. If I was doing a 3,000 point army, I would have a unit of these guys in a battle wagon and then have fun. But in a 2,000, 1,850, 1,500 or lower, I'm not too sure about it because the odd unit of bolters, you roll once and there are, I can roll a lot of ones, ones on their armor saves. You take a few wounds here and there, they're not gonna be shooting you down. They've got to get to you. So I just don't know about the Mega Knobs. They're not really for me in my game style. But if you want a heavily armoured unit to go up in their tank, just ready to rip your opponent's throat out, then these are for you. And there's two more in the Elite section. We've got Commandos, 50 points. Um, these models do look really cool. 50 points get you five Commandos. Weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 2, strength 3, toughness 4, 1 wound, initiative 2, 2 attack, leadership 7, 6 up save, slugger, chopper, stick bombs, here we go, furious charge, infiltrate, mob rule, move through cover, stealth, may include up to 10 more commandos at 10 points a model, up to 2 commandos may replace their sluggers with one of the following, a rocket launcher for 5 points, a big shooter for 5 points, or a burner for 15, one model may be upgraded to a boss knob for 10 points, they can have melee weapons um, from the melee weapons list and the boss knob may take a boss bolt. These guys are designed for fun, just to go and outflank, so hide for a turn, your entire army is coming up. These guys come on from the side, similar to how you use gene stealers, uh, but these guys also have stealth, so they outflank, outflank them into cover and they'll, be more, they'll have more resilience and then carry on, go into combat, steal an objective on your opponent's side of the field or do what you like with them. They're 50 points, they're cheap. They're, they're gonna just be designed to annoy your opponent really, because you'll have orcs everywhere. Boss Snipgrot, 60 points. Um, he's the commando-y kind of character. Think Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator. Weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 2, strength 5, toughness 4, 2 wounds, initiative 3, 4 attacks, leadership 8, 6 up save. He uh, has stick bombs, here we go, he causes fear, which doesn't really come into effect against Tyranids or Space Marines. Their furious charge, independent character, infiltrate, mob rule, move, recover and stealth. His gifts of Gork and Mork are, Mork's teeth are a pair of melee weapons which are his knives. Each has the following profile strength of the user, which is five, AP five, melee, and shred. So re-rolling in combat. Ambush. If boss Snigroit joins a unit of commandos, which you would, that are held in reserves, which you would, and no other independent characters join that unit, which you would, 
then Snickrot's unit can move on from any table edge when they arrive from reserves. No dice roll is required to determine where these enter from, and the Orc player chooses. In addition, Boss Snickrot and his unit have their Stealth Special Rule replaced with Shrouded Special Rule on the turn they deploy or arrive from reserves until the start of their next turn. So, the first turn they come on, so it's, say it's turn two, you roll, oh, this big unit of Commandos and Snickrot is coming in. You choose what site they come on, you then have Shrouded for a turn, and then after that turn it goes back to Stealth. Boss of the Red Skull Commandos, Boss Snigrat can only join units of Commandos. If Boss Snigrat is included in a detachment that includes at least one unit of Commandos, Boss Snigrat does not take up a slot in the Force Organization chart. That's okay, but nowadays people aren't really too fussed about the Force Organization chart with all the detachments, all the formations and unbound abilities you can have in your armies. So if you have a unit of Commandos, 60 point gives you snick rot, they have shrouded when they come in, you don't have to roll and potentially waste that unit. You can have them come on whatever side you want. In fact, have a unit of commandos with snick rot and then have another unit of commandos and then just have fun. Your opponent's face seeing a load of orc models in his deployment side and they've got stealth and the one unit with snick rot has shrouded. It, you, you have to Again, this is a, a, a tactic for Tyranids. You have to make your opponent forget what's the priority target. He sees all these units, and does he shoot the closest units? Does he shoot the bigger units and let the closest units come forward? Does he shoot the units that's just outflanked and ignore that? He's not going to have enough firepower, or she's not going to have enough firepower to take down everything or shoot at everything in your army. If you give him many different options, they're going to make a few bad decisions and then you can exploit this with the models you've got. Uh, which is what all can do best. They've got a lot of cheap units um, and a couple of hard hitting units such as the knobs in Mega Armor, the knobs war biker squadron. In the elite section they've got some good distraction units of commandos, burners and tank busters that may not necessarily do the killing but it gives you a good distraction for your opponent. You spend 5% of your army point, if you're doing a 2,000 point army, spend five, around 5% on each unit, so that's, if you had a unit of all three, that's 15% each of your entire points cost, just to distract your opponent, and then that gives your hard hitting units the ability to go up and kill. So this has been in the link section of the Orcs Codex. Tell me what you use in your Orc army and what you're loving about the Orcs and still love about the Orcs. I've been Mark from the Xenobids channel giving you my insight on the Orcs Codex, the tactics, how I'm going to use some models and I'll keep painting for you. It's a nice day today so I'm probably going to be made to go out for a nice long summer's walk but I just want to paint. She can't hear me. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Mark from the Xenomish channel. This is an Orc Codex. This has been an Orc video. And I'll see you on my next video.